Well, hello again, friends. We're, uh, where are we at? Hermiston? In the close. Umatio? Umatioe, I don't know, you told we're, me how to pronounce it. We're fucking it. somewhere in Oregon. I have no idea what's going on. What I do know is that I'm gonna have this car re-keyed. Already made the appointment before I came up to get it in Nevada because I knew that there was an aftermarket fucking low jack installed and I was hoping it didn't have a kill switch on it, which it appears to not have. Here's the owned by Spirion unit. That's who owns Lojack. There's the fuse to keep it going. There's the little small harness right there, this plug, which on the other end gets its power from here. And then this plugs into your OBD2 port, the original one and replaces it with this dummy one. So this is the bypass, and that's the power pigtail. And then the unit receives power right there. It has a really long-lasting fuse right here behind this fuse cap. And then it just goes right into this device. And these are supposed to have a battery, so they work even when the car's off, but I noticed both the red and the green light that were blinking when I pulled this out of my car are just no longer there and nothing is wired up to the starter. I just have the original OBD2 port. I haven't tried to start the car yet, which is why I haven't thrown this on the freeway or whatever. I think I have a special plan for this, uh, for the dealership that sold me this car. So what we're doing is we've got an OBD2 scanner that we thankfully pulled, and we're looking for codes right now. I don't know if these are sophisticated enough to put a nanny mode on your car, like if it leaves the geo fence or not. So I'm gonna do some Googling. Uh, for now, I think it just it's cheap enough and Dinky enough. I think it just broadcasts a signal. I don't think there's actually any overrides in this little box, but I don't know. So I'm gonna Google some shit. Uh, Paul's looking for codes and um, that's what we're doing. So more updates later. I think worst case scenario, I'm just gonna stay in Boise tonight. I'm gonna kind of hobble this thing over to a Nissan dealership and say, I know the car runs beautifully, but there's something either with the fueling, with the ECU, there's some throttling stuff that's just fucking weird. And I don't know yet, it could have been this all along. So I'm gonna do some Googling. Right now we're just gonna kick it in the gas station parking lot for a few. We'll be back. So check this out. Paul did some Googling too. Listen to this. The LoJack mobile app helps connect you to your car so that you can receive notifications about your vehicle's location, battery life, service updates, and more i.e. anything your OBD2 port could feed into an onboard diagnostics uh, module that's, I don't know, displaying in the tech package of your Nismo Z, for example, because we can see how long our last service was and reset and all that. Better yet, all bold, geofence and driving behavior notifications if your vehicle's being driven outside of the speed and location boundaries that you set, which means a couple of things. We unplug it, we look for codes, no more codes. By the way, the VDC light went off and so did the, the ABS. ABS light. Yep. So there's some sort of weird malfunctioning going on. This means that when they said, oh, we installed LoJack, we can't uninstall it, but you get all access to it once you buy your own LoJack package for 600 bucks or whatever, instead of just taking it out of the car, that means someone's actively using the control module if they're setting parameters on an application or it was set from the dealership and just forgotten about. The problem is it had to do with the geofence because we had this car, Paul, uh, pretty fast. Yes. Going through each gears. It was yep. pulling healthy. Rolling, and, rolling every single one of them with no issues whatsoever. So tell them the theory that you told me about popping in and out of signal for the geofence. So we're in back roads, uh, Eastern Washington, and I was losing cell phone reception. And it seems like when I was losing cell phone reception, the car had zero issue rolling through the gears and had full speed, full RPM. Uh, it's just a theory, but it seems like when the low jack lost reception, all of a sudden we had the full car back. Yep. And the other thing too is when I pulled the module out, and it wasn't connected to a kill switch, thank God. And they say on their website they don't has does not have the ability to disable your car, but the app, however, seems to think otherwise. When I found the device and un, like pulled all the wires and got the device out of my hand, there was a green and a red blinking light on it. And uh, I looked, I traced all the cables. They were closed loop cables, and the only thing that was connected to the car was the OBD2. So I took them out, popped out the OBD2, 
the, took the pass-through out, took the loop that connected to itself out, pulled the device out, no batteries, all the lights are gone on it, and no more check engine type of lights, right? The VDC and all that stuff is gone. Yeah, So we So the car fired right up and all that shit, so I'm guessing there's just weird interference. All right, update time. We are back on the road. We're in Baker City, Oregon. Uh, since removal of LoJack, we've had zero problems with the car so far. So I'm trying to knock on imaginary wood that we're not going to run into any crazy stuff. So there's the sign for Baker City. I have relinquished the keys to Paul. Paul's going to do um, as much of a leg as I can. Much better than I did because we're not going to have to stop every fucking 30 minutes and try and troubleshoot car stuff hopefully so so far so good um feels much better everything feels like it's was supposed to be um can't really complain other than that i mean it's annoying to go through this it's annoying to recognize that all the snow you see on your screen now is stuff we're driving towards but um yeah, I think, you know, worst case scenario, if we get fatigued, because we've both had a really long weeks, so we're probably just going to call it a night and pull it in somewhere and try again tomorrow. That's just how that's going to go. All right, so update. Uh, we're in the most beautiful and aesthetically pleasing landscape of all time with wildlife and cows up on the hills up there just free grazing and probably buffaloes who knows we're in idaho state where nothing good ever happens to anyone and we're probably going to stay here for the night i think because we're both pretty exhausted and mentally whipped from trying to troubleshoot our way through all the fucking problems we had with this uh gremlin that we uh dug out of our fucking obd2 port so What are your first impressions of driving a 370Z 3.7 liter V6 with a manual transmission? I gotta say the NA power, the raw power. It's oh fun, man, right? it's so much fun. And the sound of this thing, it handles like a dream. Uh, it's It's got so much and in, in more while you're driving it. it it's, uh, it's got a, a lot of potential. And for me, I don't know. Behind my hands, it's doing just fine, but I know behind someone like Angel's, uh, he can turn the traction control off and really have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> not every day, but yeah. The, the fun button can be pressed, and uh, drifting and all kinds of slidey stuff can happen. But yeah, these are, did, what were your expectations, do you think, before driving one? Just add, makes noise, rice rockety. I didn't realize that there was so much horsepower. Like the, the raw low end that you get from these, from the yeah. V6, was not expecting that. I was expecting more top end fast sports car. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of low end to it. It's which, got some grunt. It's got some grunt. It's got some balls. I like balls. I like balls. I like balls. Oh my goodness, good morning sports fans. I'm in, uh, I'm in mountain time. Which means it's fucking earlier, it's later in the day by an hour than it says. It's like, I woke up. It's like, oh, 3.50 a.m.? Really? Not really. Anyway, I hope uh, we get through the snow okay. I hope it's not sticking a bunch because probably about three hours away in North, uh, North Nevada, where I'm headed, <clears throat> it's on the east side, like closer to Utah, which was not near as bad as um, what, what's going on in Lake Tahoe and Reno. So that's good news, but they said 0.7 of an inch of snow. <coughs> And I just want to get through it and get over it and get to the south where there is no snow uh, and my house is. So even though it says 10 and a half hours worth of driving, it's only 530 something miles. So depending on weather, uh, I think that's like closer to seven and a half to eight hours worth of driving if, uh, if we're motivated and we don't fuck around and we don't have problems like we did all day long yesterday with 
um, the low jack fucking up my car. So, wish us luck. I'm gonna go check out, see if they have any coffee, and uh, I think Paul's just getting up and getting ready to go, so we're gonna hit the road pretty soon. We'll see you in a bit. Uh, we're at 6,000, I think it's at 400 and something feet. Uh, it, there's snow everywhere. Uh, there is, this guy's a snow plow, he's doing God's work, which is great to see. Uh, because there's gonna be even more of this stuff coming. And I can't think of a worse car to attempt to drive through snow than what we're in right now. So my butt won't stop making a fist. It hasn't been for a while. That's two of us. But the good news is uh, that guy was just plowing and it looks like the roadway is dry-ish. It wasn't back where we came from. And GoPros generally don't do great without a bunch of light. So you're probably not going to see a lot of this yet. But... It sure is pretty, I just wish I was not driving through it, and we were already in the south, so... Yeah, this is... Hairy. More, more ice ahead. Here we go. <laughs> we just turned the camera on, like, right after we came out of the flurry. Yeah. The road was turning white. Uh... It's a good old time. The flakes were pretty fucking big, and this is a... Not all-wheel drive. No. It's a... Uh... It's not a good winter car, this, it turns out. Cool. Look at all the dirt and all the... It's funny to see the arrow on all this actually working where all the dirt goes. She's gross. We're in uh, McGill, Nevada, and we just fucking cruised through those mountains over there. And uh, I woke up this morning trying to choose life, but there was so much snow and ice, like, I mean, I would not, I love this car so far, but I would not take it through the snow. Just saying, if you're out there and you're doing a cross country trip to get your new 370Z home with you, my advice, have it sent to you. This is bananas. <clears throat> Wide tires are great for big contact patch, but I'll tell you what, it's like driving on fucking skis, so. Be, be safe out there. I'm just trying to get home. We're four and a half hours away from home. We got a little more snow to get through, but it's uh, the weather report says it's way less than what we just went through. So I think the worst of it's over. So yes, time to recharge and get home. Uh, here's the snow. It wasn't fog, it was snow. These tiny little flakes mean much colder than bigger ones that stuck together. So hopefully they get ginormous and eventually stop. And leave us the fuck alone. Now you were saying um, there's, it's supposed to continue snowing virtually all day long today, right? Correct. Yeah. And overnight into tomorrow, this area is supposed to get five to six inches of snow. So it's a good thing we're doing this now. Uh, really wish we could have done this yesterday before all of this hit. But yeah. We got blown over by blowjacks, so. Dude, we would have been absolutely clapped out, like mental capacity brain-wise, trying to do this in the middle of the night, like. Yeah. Plus where we came from, where it had started snowing last night hard, that would have been just savage to try and deal with in the middle of the night. That's a good point, fair, fair point. Cause that was, I was losing traction pretty good going up that hill, so. Scary. So far, so good here, knock on wood. I want to count our blessings, but I was just looking at uh, the Nevada cameras, and it looks like all the way up through here is pretty clear, even with the snowfall on either side. The roads look clear enough from all the all the um, plows that they've been driving through and all the salt that they've been putting on the roads. But yeah, we're definitely going to need to desalt the car when we get oh to Vegas. Oh my gosh. It's brutal. I'm going to have to dip this whole car in Iron X and soak it for 15 minutes. But yeah, if you're curious about whether or not it's it snows in Nevada, the answer is yes, it does. Very much um, so up here. Quite Holy a shit. bit. Just a little bit, just enough you can get your finger on the power button better. Well, welcome back. We're not without casualties. We we were in the last probably five miles. There's very deep snow that my car was plowing through. Someone lost a clump of chain, like snow chain, that sunk into the 
bank, the like snow bank in the middle. My car was floating around trying to stay on uh, where where the ruts are, where there's still pavement underneath there. And uh, I slammed right into those tire chains. It ripped a hole in the side of the bumper, ripped the bottom connecting plate off. And I mean, we're five to seven miles away from no more snow. And now we're just kind of in the Great Basin Plains, getting into blue skies now. Couldn't, couldn't have waited five more miles before uh, slicing a very expensive body part off. But you know what? All things considered, this is going to be one for the history books, right? I mean, this will be very memorable for me. Me too. I was white knuckling it and I wasn't even driving. Yeah, <laughs> there was a point there where I lost full control of the car and we were just snake sliding on, on top of the snow and ice across both lanes. Um, and I just had to let go of the throttle, didn't apply the brake and just coasted out. I'm like, either we'll catch and we'll correct or we won't and we'll be off the side of the road in very deep snow but got a good recovery out of it. It was nice, so I don't know how long do you think that slide was? I don't know, it felt like forever for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't even driving. We, we probably slid. We made it home. Uh, no loss of life. Significant damage to the car though. That's a pisser. That really sucks. We were in the snow drift, hit the chains, someone's snow chains. So that sucks. So tonight, because I'm not going to put it up on stands and do oil until probably tomorrow and we're going to do the brakes, here's what we are going to do. Spark plugs and coil packs. So if you're wondering what's the most effective way in a 370Z to do this, uh, we, found, we found the answer for you. You take out the strut tower bar. You can, if you want to, pop off the beauty rings over top of the plenum, but you don't have to. All you gotta do is take this mid pipe out, 